Hey YouTube, welcome back to my object-oriented TypeScript series. In this video, we'll be going over polymorphism. So in the last video, we went over inheritance and we also covered the first benefit of inheritance, which is avoiding code duplication. So if we have many classes that share the same state and behavior, we can extract it out into a superclass, right? So let's say we had a few player classes when we were creating, let's say the Mario clone, we have a class called Mario and Luigi and let's say Peach, right? And all of these have move, move and let's say play voice recording, right? Move and play voice recording. And we saw that the first benefit with inheritance is being able to remove code duplication by pulling out shared state and behavior into a superclass. So let's say they also shared some state. What could be some state in the Mario players? We could have health, right? Got health right here. And instead of repeating this, what's code duplication, we extracted them out, abstracted them out into a class called character or a player. I'm gonna say a character. And the character is gonna have the state and behavior. And then we're going to remove the implementations in the in these classes and simply extend the character. So now Mario, Luigi and, Luigi and Peach are inheriting these methods and instance variables. So that's the first benefit of inheritance. We have removed code duplication. The second benefit of inheritance, which we'll cover over this video, is providing a common protocol for a group of subclasses. And what this brings us is polymorphism. So when we use inheritance, we tell our program that all classes grouped under a certain supertype will have all of the methods and instance variables that the supertype has. So let's say we have a class hero and we're creating some sort of RPG game. A hero has hunger, which is a number and it also has health, which is a number. And let's say it has some methods. It has the attack method, move, and eat. And these will have simple implementations. I'm attacking. I'm moving. And also, I'm eating. And then we'll have a few classes, subclasses, inheriting from hero. We'll have an archer, which extends hero. And we'll also have a mage and knight. A mage extends from the hero. And we'll also have a knight. And these will have specific behavior to these hero classes. So we're going to override attack. And we'll log firing an arrow and then we'll decrement this dot arrows and of course we need an arrows instance variable right so this is overriding it we're overriding the super classes behavior and actually let's use the supers method first super dot attack so it's going to constant log i'm attacking firing an arrow this is going to, mage is going to have some mana, it's going to be a number, and it's going to attack. It's going to call super.attack, and then it's going to log firing an arrow. Let's do throwing a potion. And this dot mana minus equals one. And then the knight is just going to have, let's say it's going to have shield HP and attack super dot attack i'm swinging with a sword so we can create these classes let's create a new archer let's create a mage and let's create a knight and test that these classes work correctly so Archer dot attack, mage dot attack, 
and night dot attack. So we see that the archer prints out I'm attacking fire an arrow, the mage prints out I'm attacking throwing a potion, and the knight throws out I'm attacking I'm swinging a sword. So in this inheritance, we have a hero class, and the second benefit I'm talking about with inheritance, with the idea of creating a common protocol for these subclasses, is that the hero class tells TypeScript that everyone who, every subclass who who extends from me, will have these instance variables and will have these methods, and having this guarantee that all hero classes, right? Archer extends hero, so archer is a hero, a mage is a hero, and knight is a hero. Having this guarantee that these three these three hero classes right here have these three methods allows us to take advantage of polymorphism. And this what polymorphism what polymorphism is, is that it allows us to refer to a subclass object in a super superclass variable, right? So here we see that when we are having the type of the variable. We see that the type of the variable is inferred implicitly by TypeScript, right? Because this value is an archer. And then the type of the archer variable is archer. Same thing for mage and same thing for knight. But because of polymorph polymorphism, what we can do is we can declare the type, explicitly annotate the type of archer to be of type hero. The reason why we can wire up a hero type variable to an archer object is because since the archer extends the hero, an archer is a hero. So when we need type safety, when the compiler needs type safety, we still get that type safety because all of the methods and instance variables of a hero, the archer has as well since it extends it. And this is what polymorphism is. We can do the same thing for the other two with the mage and knight. And now, as long as TypeScript is concerned, these three variables are hero type variables. They aren't specific archer, mage, or knight. And these, these hero is a super type of these subtypes. So you might be asking what the advantage of declaring these type of super type variables and then wiring them up to subtype objects. Well, the main benefit is it makes our code, uh, it makes our code very flexible. Let's say we had a tribe class and we're going to create a list of heroes. It's going to be a hero array. And because it's private, we're going to need a setter, set heroes. And this is going to take a hero, let's say hero array. And I'm just going to set this dot heroes to heroes. And then, and then the main method that the tribe class will be known for is the attack. And what this attack method does is it's going to loop through all of the tribe's heroes and, and let those heroes attack. So for every hero of this dot heroes, we're going to call hero dot attack. So here we're using polymorphism because we don't know what these specific heroes are. We just care that this array these these specific objects are heroes because we all we care about is we just need guarantees that the things that we're working with are heroes so we have access to the attack eat and move methods and health and hunger properties because it's, it's a hero that's what the hero class creates this is a common protocol it's a contract that all three that all three in this case but all in general all subclasses will conform to so we know for a fact that when we at runtime uh, we will have access to the attack method because that's what the hero type gives us. So to use this tribe class, we can create a new tribe. Let's create heroes first. Let's create the hero array. So here we're going to just move this down for readability. And the heroes will be a hero array. And it's going to be archer, mage, and the knight. And then what we can do is we can create the tribe tribe equals new tribe, instantiate that, and then we'll do tribe dot set heroes and pass in the list of heroes. And then we will call finally tribe dot attack to launch an attack on maybe an enemy tribe or something like that. And let's compile that. And we see we get the same thing that we got before 
when explicitly calling the attack method on each the archer, mage, and knight. So the calling code right here, tribe, doesn't care what specific subclass it is. It doesn't care if it's an archer or if it doesn't care if it's a mage, it doesn't care if it's a knight. As long as you give it an array of heroes, then the tribe class is good because for all it cares, the tribe class just wants to call the attack method. And because we have these three subclasses extending, inheriting from the hero, the tribe class can, can rest, assur rest assured from the compiler saying, don't worry, the things that will be passed to you are definitely hero objects and you will be able to call this attack method at compile time without any worry. So to show you how flexible this is, imagine that I just create this code and then I go on vacation and then someone else wants to reuse my tribe class code with a different set of heroes, right? Let's say a few weeks pass by, right? In the software company that I'm working at. And now there's a new ask saying to create, to support tribes of thieves, right? It's a new type of hero. They're called like thieves. So someone here could create a, um, let's say like a thief and it extends the hero class, right? So this is new code. This is not touching the old tribe class code. And what this does is it has the attack method. And what this does is call super.attack, the super types attack method. And then it calls the dot logs, let's say pickpocket. And that's it. So then we can create a new list of heroes. And this one will be, let's say, it won't be pickpocket, it just, yeah, it'll be pickpocket. And then we'll have a thief equals a new thief. So we create that thief object. And then this hero array will be, let's say a knight, a thief, and a mage. And this will be called heroes two. So then we can create a new tribe, tribe two, and do that. And then we can set the heroes and we can pass in tribe two. Or no, no, we don't pass in tribe two. We set tribe two dot set heroes, heroes two. So here we created a brand new thief class and we were able to reuse the tribe code without touching any of the other code, right? So it's very flexible because since we have this, this super type first, we, we create the super type then we can go in later and easily extend the code and just create subclasses of this hero class. And this is using polymorphism because again, we're passing the tribe a list of heroes right here, but the tribe doesn't really care what you pass it. If you pass it a thief or you pass it an archer or mage, all it cares is that at runtime, it has the same contract that the hero does. And that's what happened. We could create new, new, new classes after the code, initial code was created and reuse and be easily extensible. So yeah, that's the main benefit of polymorphism. We can work with more general types and which makes our code much more flexible. And one thing to remember when working with polymorphism is that you can, you can fit or you can wire up objects on the right hand side to a type on the right hand, on the left hand side, if the object is the type. So here, this type is hero, right? And an archer is a hero. It passes the is a test because the archer extends the hero, right? Whenever you see extends, then you know that the, you see A extends B, you know that A is a B, right? So we know that the archer is a hero. Because we know that the archer is a hero and the mage is a hero and the knight is a hero, then we also know that we can use polymorphism to do this. And this doesn't just stop at the first level of inheritance. Let's say we, want, we wanted to even niche down, not niche down, specialize even more. For example, mages, I don't really know if this makes sense, but let's say there could be wizards and witches and the mage is just some general type. We could create a wizard which extends the mage, right? And we're just not going to create any sort of body for these classes right now and there's a witch and because of that the wizard is a mage right 
but when we go to the definition of the mage, the mage is, is also, the mage is a hero, right? So because the wizard is a mage and a mage is a hero, then a wizard is a hero as well and a witch is a hero as well. So if we go here to where we're creating our heroes, we can of course do this, right? This is the typical first level that you have, new wizard. And this is a wizard object with a wizard type, but we can also put this in a mage, right? So that's just going one level up the hierarchy of classes because a wizard is a mage right here because the wizard extends the mage. But since the mage extends the hero, we can also put wizard in a hero because technically a wizard is still a hero, right? It still extends from mage and uh, the mage also extends from the hero. So at the end of the day, the wizard is still inheriting these methods and instance variables. So yeah, poly polymorphism runs however many levels you want down the class hierarchy. So yeah, that's polymorphism. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because poly means many and morph means form, right? So hero could be many forms. Hero could be an archer, it could be a mage, it could be a knight, it could be a wizard. It doesn't really care as long as, you know, I mean, TypeScript doesn't really care as long as the things that you're dealing with when you are working with hero types are in fact heroes. So that's polymorphism. It makes our code very flexible. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about abstract classes.